Good evening, high school football fans. This is High School Football America for February the 5th, 2015. I'm Jeff Fisher, host of the show and founder and editor-in-chief of High School Football America and HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Settling in for our usual 60 minutes worth of high school sports talk here on the Artist First Radio Network tonight. And, uh, oh, what a day it was yesterday. 11 hours of TV. How things have grown. I, I remember going back to 1994 in Allentown, Pennsylvania, my first television job. And uh, signing day back then. Actually, it's kind of funny. We didn't even have signing days back in the Lehigh Valley back then. And uh, we had some, some Division One kids, 1A at the time, because it was 1A and 1AA. And uh, when we uh, we thought about what we would do special for that, we started calling the schools and saying, hey, uh, you need to have some sort of a ceremony there. Have the moms and the dads there and the family and have them sign the, um, sign the letters of intent right in front of us. And it, it, it became a huge thing. I think the first um, year we did it, we did like a five-minute feature on all the kids from our area. And our high school area really contained about 110 kids. So uh, uh, no surprise that uh, they were able to fill 11 hours worth of uh, signing day stuff on ESPNU yesterday. I think some of it, though, is a little out of control. You know, back then we uh, we just had the kids sign. Uh, we weren't playing the shell game with hats and pulling, uh, you know, uh, gloves out of bags and all that. It's become a little bit too much show for my liking. But, you know, on the other uh, other side of the coin, you have to remember that this is the culmination of a, 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 a lot of hard work for these uh, these kids, their families, and their coaches. It's a it's a team effort, and uh, lots of uh, lots of good information was put out there. And we wish all of the kids nothing but uh, the greatest of success. Take advantage of the scholarship and the education. Um, a couple of people on Twitter yesterday said some uh, negative things. What happen? Uh, what will happen to the kids as they go to college that they have to focus more on football? But at the end of the day uh, the NFL is a long ways off it's a small percentage so uh, young men who are listening make sure you go to class out there and take advantage of that scholarship because uh, it, it's not cheap to go to college anymore you know with most scholarships you know it's uh, 40 to 50 thousand dollars a piece uh, bringing up a pretty good uh, chunk of change uh, USA Today high school sports uh, took a uh, Took a composite poll for the team rankings. Uh, how did the uh, the various schools around the country do? And what they did was they took the uh, the four ranking services, the four major ones, twenty four seven Sports, uh, ESPN, Rivals, and Scout, and they averaged them out. And a little bit later, we're going to take a look at the um, at the winners. And uh, at the top. Alabama was uh, ranked number one by 24-7 Sports and number one by ESPN, number two by Rivals, and number two by Scout. So they ended up being number one, but we'll take a look at the uh, entire list of uh, 25 schools put together by USA Today's High School Sports. Uh, they do a great job there and uh, been uh, doing a lot of stuff uh, with them recently on our website because they, uh, they do a real good job of kind of uh, giving you the entire picture and a uh, good mesh with High School Football America. So, uh, and, and by the way, congratulations to, uh, to Blake Barnett, a young man from out here in Southern California who signed with Alabama. Uh, we interviewed Blake on the show, I guess it was uh, January of last year. Last year, and want to remind everyone that you can listen to all of our past shows for free. Uh, two places for the archives: HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. We have an audio tab there. You can listen to all of them. We have all the names of the people. It's a who's who list of high school football players and coaches, uh, and uh, we just add to it every week as soon as the show ends live. We uh, put it into our archive, so you'll be able to hear this show. If you're just tuning in now and you missed the first uh, whatever it's been, three or four minutes, you'll be able to listen to uh, that part of the show in its entirety at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com and on the Artist First Radio Network at ArtistFirst.com forward slash jefffisher.htm. Uh, we have had our shows on the Artist First Radio Network downloaded over a half a million times. We're actually getting some updated numbers. We think there are a lot more than that. So thanks to uh, everyone that's taken the time to... Um, listen to our, our our shows through the years and uh, mentioned uh, Blake Barnett who's going to Alabama also on the show last year one of the top quarterbacks who yesterday signed with Missouri Drew Locke uh, he was on the show that was back in July of last year so just go to uh, the audio tab there where it says uh, high school football America radio show and you'll be able to hear all of our shows we're uh, up over uh, 120 shows at this point uh, that we began back in July of 2011 and speaking of 
things that uh, get started and are still rolling along. About 30 days ago, we started the Coach's Job Board on HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com, and uh, we've uh, I think we're up around 200 jobs right now. Some have expired, but I think there are 22 active job listings uh, for high school football coaches at all levels, at all size schools, in all states. Uh, it's available for you there free at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. It's uh, right on the navigation tab. It's called the Coach's Job Board. If you are a coach out there and you have an opening on your staff and you want to publicize it to our uh, national audience, please feel free to email me at Jeff at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. If you're an administrator, you have an opening uh, at the head coaching position, please do the same thing. Just email me, uh, direct message me on Twitter. And uh, while we're talking about Twitter, please follow us at HSFB America or on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash High School Football America. So lots going on. The two-minute drill growing. Uh, We expanded it from five days a week, Monday through Friday. Last week we started uh, Saturday and Sunday, and we will continue that right on through the year. A great way to get your daily dose of high school football news. Just go to uh, highschoolfootballamerica.com right there on the homepage. It'll teach you how you can uh, either listen right on the on the website or you can uh, download it and take it on the go on your smartphone as we are available for free on iTunes. So uh, that uh, gets you up to speed on everything we're doing. Uh, speaking of news of the day, uh, the biggest story aside from National Signing Day yesterday came out this morning as uh, in New Jersey a decision is made in connection with the um, the hazing scandal that was at Saraville High School. Uh, head coach George Najar has been on paid leave since the story broke last October. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the story, it just oh, a horrific story story of uh, hazing, um, a sexual scandal. It, it happened in the locker room at uh, Saraville High School. Uh, George Najar is a New Jersey Coaches Association Hall of Fame coach. Uh, this morning, uh, the school announced that he will not be coming back. They did that as they posted the uh, the job opening, and you can apply for that job at Saraville by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com's coach's job board, but uh, uh, four assistants were suspended with Najar when the incident was um, was made public. Uh, the four assistants uh, were suspended with pay, and uh, they have been reinstated, but Najar is done after 20 years at the school, 20 straight years of uh, playoffs until last year. Najar's overall record in 20 years with the uh, the Bombers was 165-54. and 54. He also had a, a good career prior to coming to Saraville. He was a coach at Abe Lincoln High School in Brooklyn, New York. There he had a record of uh, 94-32-1. Again, uh, highschoolfootballamerica.com being updated um, usually not only daily but hourly sometimes and we have a section on there uh, under the news tab which is state by state so you can find out your favorite uh, state's news by just uh, clicking on us there and uh, one other thing before we uh, tell you about our guest tonight on the show had a opportunity to reminisce a little bit uh, it was kind of a uh, a rewind Tuesday or something along those lines and uh, you know a lot of things that happened yesterday during National Signing Day that that caught everybody's attention had to do with players that verbally committed on ESPNU and then they haven't faxed in their letter of intent yet. And, uh, you know, we all know about the flip-flops as uh, all these recruiting services are trying to talk to the kids and break the verbal commitment. Who's going to break the story of where they're going? And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, at some level, I don't want to say it's a joke, but it's just one of those things that I'm just like, okay, well, it doesn't matter until somebody signs. And it got me thinking, and I wrote a story that you can read on uh, highschoolfootballamerica.com about Dan Kendra. Uh, Dan Kendra was a young man at Bethlehem Catholic High School in Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania. I uh, was the uh, weekend sports director at WFMZ TV when uh, literally I believe he became the first national darling when it came to high school recruiting. Because up until that point, as I said, when we did our first signing day, you know, it just happened, you know, and. Um, it was not a big deal, but but Dan was a, a linebacker. Oh, well, he was a quarterback playing in a linebacker's body. I mean, Dan is still probably one of the toughest players that I've ever seen on a high school football field. Six two, two hundred twenty pounds, could run a four five forty. 
could throw the ball 80 yards in the air with a flick of his wrist. Uh, he, he, he's just strong as could be. He could bench press uh, 400 pounds. Uh, I remember back in eighth grade when he threw an interception, uh, he, he, he went downfield and made the tackle. Uh, on the guy who intercepted the ball, and Dan hit him so hard that he broke his arm in three spots. <laughs> he 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 was he was quirky. He he owned an alligator. His uh, his dad played for Bobby Bowden at West Virginia when Bowden was the coach there before moving on to uh, Florida State. And and Dan's uh, dad was a little bit too much involved in in many ways. And I wrote about that. But you you should read the story because he really was the first kid to flip flop. Uh, Dan had verbally committed in December to going to Penn State. Everybody in Penn. Pennsylvania happy that he was going to play for Joe Pa. He was going to go to State College uh, where he was going to hang out with his girlfriend who was a great athlete, Christy Cochran, uh, was going there on a volleyball scholarship. And uh, Dan, you know, uh, finally got tired of all the, the, the questions. Where are you going? Where are you going? He said Penn State. His mom even bought him a beanbag chair uh, over Christmas and got all the blue and white going there. And it was around uh, Christmas time when uh, he started having second thoughts. And uh, ultimately, on January the 13th of 2000, I'm sorry, 1995, and it was a Friday the 13th, uh, Dan Kendra decided that he was going to uh, go to Florida State. I did the first interview with him after make that, making that announcement. And uh, uh, Strunky, uh, Jason Strunk, who writes the turnaround on High School Football America, reminded me of this uh, earlier this week when I wrote the story. A year later, when Dan was, you know, in Florida, redshirting at Florida State. Uh, we had an all-star game there in the Lehigh Valley, and his name was mentioned, and people still booed. <laughs> the Penn State fans uh, who were cheering when he said yay for Penn State uh, were uh, definitely booing when it came to Florida State. So uh, it's 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 been about uh, 20 years now since that all happened, but uh, go and read it. Uh, it was an interesting story to write, and you can read about Dan Kendra, the, uh, the first major national recruit in America when it came to uh, the media. I mean, uh, Inside Edition was there, uh, or was it hard copy? I can't remember. Uh, SI, ESPN, they were all there. They were all looking for different stories. I think at one point there was a there was a story where somebody wanted to take a picture of Dan with the alligator on his shoulder. And uh, that was the, uh, the, the, the money shot, so to speak, for this article. And I guess uh, the alligator got so upset that he, uh, he wetted <laughs> Dan, shall we say, peed on him, I guess, and ruined his shirt. So uh, all kinds of uh, interesting stories that uh, go back to that. You can read about it at uh, highschoolfootballamerica.com. All right, time to turn our attention to tonight's show. It's all Buckeye State tonight, Ohio football being talked about. And at the center of it, it's LaSalle High School, the number 20 team in the High School Football America Top 25 this past season, winning the Ohio Division II state title under Nate Moore. Uh, what a year as the school won its first state title in the Buckeye State. But Nate is gone. He is taking over the reins of the historic, legendary, it would even say, Massillon Washington Tiger High School football program in Massillon, Ohio. And uh, Nate is going to join us to talk about the hard decision to walk away from the program that in just two short years at LaSalle, he was able to turn around and turn into a, uh, uh, a state champ and uh, a, a nationally ranked team. But he gets a chance to take over the fourth winningest program in America. Maslin is just a, uh, a hotbed for uh, high school football, but they have not won a state title since 1972 under the uh, when they uh, the state of Ohio implemented its new uh, high school playoff system it's the uh, home of the legendary Paul Brown uh, Tiger Stadium which uh, Trish Hoffman and I I, of course, always make detours whenever I'm driving across the country. Made a detour to check out the stadium, did a 360 drive around it with video. You can check that out on highschoolfootballamerica.com. But Paul Brown, the father of uh, pro football and football in general in the state of Ohio, the Cleveland Browns named after Paul Brown, the Hall of Fame coach. And, of course, uh, Paul Brown then founded the uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. So we're going to talk uh, with uh, Nate Moore about that. And as Nate leaves LaSalle, the man coming in from Thomas Moore College in Kentucky, Jim Hilbert, who is a, an elder grad. So he's a real familiar with Cincinnati football, uh, playing in the uh, Greater Catholic League there in the South. Uh, he is the new head coach at LaSalle. We're going to talk to Jim Hilbert about uh, coming over. His dad was even an alum at LaSalle, so uh, the Lancer's not wasting any time, and uh, Hilvert's had a great career at the NCAA uh, 
Division Three level with uh, Thomas Moore College uh, leading them to four playoff appearances. So when we uh, come back on High School Football America, going to talk to Nate Moore, talking Maslin football along with LaSalle football. A couple of guys with uh, some things in common. One's, uh, one's going, one's coming. Should be fun. Stay tuned. You're listening to High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. Those rubber pellets from field turf? Be gone. How? With the Debris Inhibitor Razor. It's a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing fields out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and out of the locker rooms. It's favorited by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have time just to tape for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in their house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is made of 70% nylon and 30% spandex material, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor, also known as the TDI Razor, covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable via screen print or embroidery, machine washable, and most important, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is available in black, white, and pink, 12 colors in all, and special colors may also be ordered. Sizes available, youth, that's 4 to 6, the 7 to 9, medium shoe, the large shoe at 10 to 13, and for that extra Bigfoot guy, 14 to 17 is available. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III and three other partners, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patent design, patented design, and um, something that This great American-made product was founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III and three partners at Southern Sport. Southern Sport created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by... This great American-made product was founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III and three partners at Southern Sport. They created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes and allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Go to TDI Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R dot com to learn more. And if you use our code H-S-F-B-A-R-Z-R-1, you'll get a discount on your order. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Tony the Tiger reminding all you dads out there, whenever you sit down and share your love and passion for the game of high school football, you do it with the kids over a bowl of Frosted Flakes. Well, we're going to start the show tonight in Ohio, one of the most legendary programs in America, fourth on America's all-time wins list, uh, Maslin Washington, the Tigers. And I remember uh, before moving to L.A. here in 2012 when I was back home, I I made a stop to see uh, legendary Tiger Stadium. Uh, Pretty good guy there, Paul Brown, the uh, Hall of Fame coach, uh, named after him. He was the uh, coach there. Lots of tradition. And right now, uh, Nate Moore is in charge of taking over that tradition, uh, last year leading LaSalle and Cincinnati to uh, the school's first ever championship there, a Division II title. They were number 20 in the High School Football America, top 25 last year. And now uh, Nate's got uh, the uh, the job of getting uh, Maslin back to where those fans, those rabid fans, want it to be, and he's on the line to talk about it right now. Welcome to the show, Coach. Hey, how are you doing? Good to be here. Um, I'm happy to have you on here and, and talk a little bit about the Tigers. I've uh, I, I've seen the documentaries. I, I've seen all the national press. Uh, we know it's a lot, and you're not there yet. You're going to get there uh, in March. What are what are some of your thoughts? Well, you know, Maslin, is, it's just an unbelievable place. Um, it, it's a it's a very uh, blue collar town. It's it's its own little slice of America. Um, it, it's full of great people. They care a lot about their football program, um, and, and it you know it, it's the, the, all the traditions, all the 
you know, the fanfare that, that, that goes around it is is yeah, it's is is really unbelievable, you know, from the the praise during McKinley Week and, and those types of things that I'm learning about. Um, it's a really special place to be. And and you know, with uh, being a special place and with all the tradition and all that, there comes a little bit of pressure uh, with that. Uh, t- t- tell me a little bit about how you think about making sure that when you go in there, you you set a tone from the beginning and 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 set it as the uh, the the Nate Moore program, uh, 2015 right. style. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it, it's a job that, that comes with a lot of pressure. There's a there's a, a, a high demand for excellence as well as should be. Um, you know, from my standpoint, I, I don't know that anybody can put any pressure um, on myself to, to succeed and be great any, any more than I do myself. And, and, and to be honest, any more than my wife does. <laughs> um, you know, so from that standpoint, it's, it's, it's great to be around uh, people that, that care a lot about football, um, that are passionate, that want to be good. I look at all those things as very, very positive things. Nate Moore on the line tonight on High School Football America, the new head coach at Maslin in Ohio, uh, Washington High School, the Tigers tradition coming uh, coming from a long, long, long time ago. And I, I mentioned, you know, legendary Paul Brown, the stadium and all that. Um, uh, young man, you're a very young man in the, in the, in the business right now. Uh, how much of a historian are you? And what do you know about Paul Brown? And what do you think about, uh, uh, you know, being there at that stadium that's named after him? Right. Um, I mean, it, it's humbling. Uh, it really is. Um, you know, b- being being a, a football coach in the state of Ohio, uh, there's no way you don't know about Madison. There's no way you don't know about the history. There's no way you don't know about Paul Brown. You know, the, the Cleveland Browns are named after him. Okay, um, he started the Cincinnati Bengals. They're both the professional teams um, in Ohio. Owe, owe, them, owe themselves to Paul Brown. Um, you know, he, he's a legend in the coaching uh, business. You know, at the NFL level, the college level, and at the high school level, and, and he's born and bred masculine tiger. Um, so, you know, to have the opportunity to walk the same sideline that, that he once walked, and um, you, you know, uh, represent that in, in some small way is is a tremendous honor and a tremendous responsibility. Let's talk a little bit about um, the the decision to leave a, a program that you built there at LaSalle in Cincinnati. Again, I said at the top, you know, the Division II title, national rankings across the board in many, many polls. Uh, uh, how difficult was it to uh, to make the decision? I mean, incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. Um, you know, the, the hardest part of leaving any, anywhere is always the people. Um, you know, it's the staff that I had. Um, it, it's the players that, you know, put their hearts and souls into into what we were trying to do there at the time. And, you know, that's, that's always really, really difficult, um, you know, but professionally for me, um, you know, to make the jump to Matchland, to um, be in, in that type of environment, uh, you know, to have an opportunity to be an athletic director at the same time, um, you know, there are a lot of factors that, that, that went into it. Um, but, yeah, extremely difficult. Love those kids that played for me. I love the coaches, and, and I'll miss them. And let's uh, give uh, go back a little bit and, and relive that a little bit. And thank you for correcting me there on the two years at LaSalle. Uh, some of the kids that you know made this year special for you and got you to a Division II championship. I know you're done there in a, in a month, but right. let's let's uh, let's give some of those kids some props and, and what kind of season sure. it was for you. Uh, I mean, it, it, was, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, LaSalle had not won a playoff game. Um, and and I, I don't tell you that to be boastful or anything like that, but that's just, you know, I, I think you have to set the stage a little bit. And uh, my first year, we were three percent. We were close. We lost a lot of close games. And, um, you know, the, the seniors that were back last year, you know, we had a lot of very long conversations about what needed to be done to get everything changed. And those guys bought in. Um, and and we, had, we had some players that were very, very talented. That's true. But we also had – you know, a bunch of just really good high school football players, guys that were tough, the guys that brought their hard hat to work every day, you know, that played their tails off, that bought into everything that we were selling. Um, and, and it was just a special group. You know, you have, you, have to, you, have, you have to throw a little bit of luck in there. You know, we stayed healthy, all those things. Um, and, you know, you talk about guys like Jeremy Larkin, who um, was in, in the mix there for the Mr. Football Award in Ohio. Uh, ran for 2,500 some yards, I believe, 40 plus touchdowns. Um, just an unbelievable talent. They'll have him back this year. Um, quarterback is back, Nick Watson. 
uh, a guy that, that really engineered the offense, made everything go, um, could throw it, can run it, and do a little bit of everything. They have two really, really good offensive linebacks. Uh, two guys that have offers, two guys that, you know, I think will both be BCS guys, and they're both back. I mean, they're, they're loaded. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Well, that's, uh, you know, that, that's a good thing. No cupboard is bare. Uh, Nate Moore on the line uh, on High School Football America tonight talking about uh, taking over the job at Maslin, Maslin Washington uh, High School in, uh, in Ohio there. And uh, let's uh, tell me a little bit about talking to the team. That had to be, had to be tough uh, saying goodbye after all that great stuff that happened. Uh, can you take us inside a little bit and tell us the things that you said to, uh, to the players, the, the, the guys that are leaving the program, the guys that are coming back? You know, it's 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 a really it's it's a very emotional thing. Um, yeah, it's both when I left Minster, um, when I when I left um, LaSalle here, and even when I left places as an assistant, and I was talking to my offensive lineman, and it's always tough, you know. Um, and and I don't think there's anything that you can tell them that that's going to make them feel any better. You know, it, it hurts for a reason, you know, uh, because it was good and. Um, if it didn't hurt a little bit, you wouldn't be doing your job right. Um, but I, I think I think with time, you know, time heals all wounds is, is the old saying. And you know, I, I think the guys will be able to look back and, and enjoy the time we had together and and respect my decision. Yeah, and you're uh, you're still there for about another month, as you told me before we started rolling the tape here. So you get to get get your goodbyes in there. Uh, Nate Moore on the line, uh, new head coach at Maslin, uh, the former head coach now at LaSalle, and uh, you you are going to have to work from afar. And, and you mentioned again before we started rolling the tape that uh, you're not going to kind of put the the thumbprint on there till you get on campus at at Maslin. So tell me what you're doing now, and then what you'll do when you arrive there in early March. Right, yeah. Right now, you know, it's about it's about three hours and fifteen minutes away from where I'm at. So you know, being uh, you know extensively traveling back and forth uh, during the week and, and that types of t- types of things is obviously out of the question. Um, so right now, I'm getting up there during the weekends. Um, you know, number one thing is put together the best staff in the state of Ohio. Uh, that's my job right now. I've hired a couple guys. Um, still working on a couple positions. Uh, but that's really my focus. Uh, we had a a big press conference on Wednesday um, where I was kind of formally announced to the team of the community, and I got to meet a, a bunch of people there formally and, and, and give my remarks and answer some questions. Um, but the big, you know, the, the big meeting, big player pair meeting where, where I lay everything out there and say, you know, this is not who we are and this is how things are going to be. I'm holding off on that. It, it looks like I'm going to be there in 29 days from the day. Just got word. Um, so we're going to do that then. The reason being is you, you can't you can't go in and say, here's how things are, and then you're not there to enforce it. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I've learned, and both as an assistant and now as a head coach, is you know, when the head coach isn't in the room, things are different. They just are. It doesn't matter how good the assistants are. It's different when the head coach is not there. Um, so – we're, we're kind of, you know, holding on to that for now, right, so that we don't have to recorrect things uh, and, 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 you know, redo things and have to have to come back in and reinforce things. You know, we want to do that right uh, uh, in one, one fell swoop, I guess, um, and be able to enforce things right away. So kind of holding off on that for now. Yeah, it makes sense. Nate Moore on the line tonight, the new head coach at Maslin. You uh, mentioned, uh, you know, you can't do it alone. You need your assistants there, too, and, and, and the job that you and your assistants did together at LaSalle. Anybody from the LaSalle staff going to come with you to uh, Maslin? Yeah, I, I'm able to bring two really key guys for me. Um, I, I'm an offensive lineman, an offensive guy by nature. Uh, I'm able to bring my defensive coordinator, uh, which, is, which is obviously a key, key position. Um, he's going to finish out the school year, and then he'll be back up full time at Maslin. There, they'll move up in the summer and, and uh, get started. He'll be up there in the weekends you know, as he can um, you know, here for the remainder of the school year. Uh, and, and then my strength and conditioning coach, who also coaches our defensive backs, is actually a Maslin guy. He'll be coming home. Um, so those two guys are coming with me and. Yeah, your strength coach and defensive coordinator, those are two key, key positions, so I'm happy to be able to bring them. 
And uh, you talked about the cupboard at LaSalle. Uh, what do you know about the cupboard so far uh, from afar at Maslin? Uh, playoffs last year, 7-4, and four, right. a loss in the first round. What, what do you have coming back? Can you give us a little thumbnail sketch from afar? Right. Uh, you know, it, I, I, don't, I don't really know. You know, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some guys that look good on film. I mean, I've watched the film, but, um, you know, I, I don't know the guys yet. Um, we haven't tested them uh, with our stuff yet. Um, it, it's really hard to say. You know, I, I think there is – there are good players there. There's no doubt about that. Um, so there is some clay to work with. Um, how good can we be year one? I think that that really remains to be seen. Nate Moore on the line, wrapping up here on High School Football America tonight. Uh, I mentioned at the top, you're a, you're a young guy, and uh, high school football seems to be more and more getting to be a young man's game, well, even though you're there at one of the most historic programs in America. How much being, uh, how much being a young guy in the sport right now helps you out as you, as you go into a program like this that is going to be re- retooled under your, uh, your thumbprint? You know, I don't know, maybe a little bit. Um... You know, just from being able to keep up with the uh, the, the demands, uh, because it is. I mean, especially at a place like Mass. I mean, be, being the head coach, uh, sometimes there's not a whole lot of coaching you actually get to do. It's all the other stuff. Um, but I can tell you, I, I worked for a guy, a key guy for me, one of my one of my mentors, Jim Place, who I, who I was an assistant for for five years. Um, he was probably in his late fifties, early sixties. When I was coaching for him, and that guy could keep up with anybody. Um, so, you, you know, youth may have something to do with it, but I don't think that's the end all be all. Um, you, you, you have to, you have to at least be able to, you know, keep up with the young guys. There's no doubt about that. But I think there's guys out there that can do it. All right. Well, congratulations on getting the job, and uh, you know, best of luck in the transition, and best of luck in 2015. Really appreciate you joining us here on High School Football America tonight. And I promise, an honor. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Nate Moore, head coach at Maslin High School. And don't forget, uh, if you're a coach out there looking for a new job, uh, we have the High School Football America Coaches Job Board. We have over 200 uh, job openings there. We've had uh, several expire, so we've uh, had well over 200 posted. So if you're a coach out there uh, that's looking for a job, if you're a coach that needs uh, to fill a position, a staff position, make sure you email me at jeff at highschoolfootballamerica.com. And uh, same goes for uh, school administrators out there, uh, especially uh, when it's your job to find a head coach. We have a a large national readership, a a great representation of coaches from around the country. So if you want to uh, publicize it for free with us at High School Football America, feel free to reach out to me. Either uh, DM me on Twitter at uh, HSFB America or email me at jeff at highschoolfootballamerica.com. All right, now the other side of the LaSalle story, Nate Moore. He's at Massillon now, leaving behind the Division II champs at LaSalle in Cincinnati and the man coming in to take over the reins of a team whose cupboard is not bare, as you heard Nate say, is Jim Hilbert, the new head coach of the LaSalle Lancers in Cincinnati's Greater Catholic League, uh, one of the tops in the country. We had him ranked number two last year overall in our rankings. And coming up, Jim Hilbert from LaSalle High School, that and more. You're listening to High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. Those rubber pellets from field turf? Be gone. How? With the Debris Inhibitor Razor. It's a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing fields out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and out of the locker rooms. It's favorited by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have time just to tape for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in their house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is made of 70% nylon and 30% spandex material, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor, also known as the TDI Razor, covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable via screen print or embroidery, machine washable, and most important, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is available in black, white, and pink, 12 colors in all, and special colors may also be ordered. Sizes available, youth, that's 4 to 6, 
the 7 to 9 medium shoe, the large shoe at 10 to 13, and for that extra Bigfoot guy, 14 to 17 is available. This great American-made product was founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III and three partners at Southern Sport. They created the debris inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes and allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Go to TDI Razor, spelled R A Z U R dot com, to learn more. And if you use our code HSFBARZR1, you'll get a discount on your order. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Tony the Tiger reminds all you dads out there, whenever you start sharing that love and passion for the game of football with the kids, you sit down and you do it over a bowl of Frosted Flakes. Well, there was a lot of activity at LaSalle High School over the last uh, week to 10 days or so as uh, the Lancers, who won the Division II championship in Ohio this past season, finishing number 20 in the High School Football America Top 25, uh, saw Nate Moore leave for Maslin, and just that quickly, in comes Jim Hilvert as the new head coach of the Lancers. He comes from uh, the NCAA Division III program, Thomas Moore College in Kentucky, where he led the uh, the school to four playoff appearances. Appearances. He is a, an elder grad, so he knows a little something about uh, coaching in the Catholic League in the Cincinnati area. And, oh, by the way, his dad is an alum of LaSalle. So on the line right now is Jim Hilbert to talk about, uh, I guess, kind of like a homecoming. Right, Coach? Oh, yes, Jeff. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, yes, it is kind of a homecoming. Come back to the GCL. I was coming to, uh, back to the place where my dad graduated high school from. Uh, it's been, I, and LaSalle's welcomed me with open arms. Uh, it's been a great week uh, it's been a whirlwind to be honest with you trying to you know get everything together uh but you know excited about the opportunity i have here in 2015 at LaSalle. well let's talk a little bit about um you know uh, what what's behind the decision you had good success at thomas moore uh 67 and 19 and eight years at the school uh what got you all jazzed up about putting your name into the hat at uh, LaSalle? just the right timing for me and my family uh you know obviously i believe the gcl is one of the top leagues in the country uh to be able to be a coach in one of the best leagues in the country definitely interests me. And just the, the right time for me and my family. It was a it was a tough decision for me. It was tough to leave the guys over at Thomas Moore. And I said, we've done a, created a winning culture there. Uh, but when the LaSalle job opened up, uh, I thought it was a really great opportunity for me to be able to coach in the GCL. And uh, I said, build on what has happened uh, last, you know, last year and continue to have success here. Yeah, absolutely. And we uh, we did speak with uh, Nate Moore, who said, uh, you know, the cupboard's not bare there. And I know you haven't had a whole lot of time there yet, but uh, it, it seems like coming off a state championship, you guys are going to be okay. What What's your initial look under the hood been uh, as far as what you see there as far as talent that you have? Just to be honest, not, not even the talent, just the work ethic the kids have been brought to the weight room. Kids have worked extremely hard in the weight room. Uh, you, it, it's that winning culture. It starts there. And then just the good kids. I mean, you know, guys like Jeremy Larkin, John Wilcox, Luke Derger, uh, Jarrell White, all these guys are welcoming me with open arms. I mean, Nick Watts, and the list goes on and on. Just the whole Beyonce, the South football family has welcomed me with open arms. And it's been a, the, they've made an easy transition for me to be that LaSalle. Talking tonight to uh, Jim Hilbert, the new head coach at LaSalle High School in uh, Cincinnati and uh, moving back to the greater uh, Catholic League there. And uh, tell, tell me a little bit about um, what you've learned uh, since you've had such success at the, at the Division Three college level. What are some of the things there that you're going to be able to bring back to what uh, is a program on the rise? Is there, is there a way to kind of translate that down into the high school ranks? I think I should, first of all, I think it comes in the offseason, uh, how you – get these guys mentally and physically tough for the grind they're going to have during the football season, uh, being able to get guys being comfortable with being uncomfortable in the off season, and just creating that winning culture in the off season. I really believe, you know, building that chemistry, building that bond, that band of brothers type mentality in the off season uh, will go a long way into what we do. And obviously scheme wise, you know, offensively we're going to run the football, get the ball to our playmakers out in space, be physical in the combat zone defensively, I said, be sound, uh, be very aggressive, uh, be able to get after people running around to the football. And, off, and the other thing, special teams, 
be able to be sound, be make some key plays on special teams. We had some very good kickers here to like go along with uh, with our good offense and good defense. I think that's a key for us to be be a good football team, be sound in all three phases, be disciplined, uh, and I think that'll go a long way for us to have continued success here in 2015. Jim Hilbert's on the line tonight on High School Football America, the new head coach at LaSalle High School in Cincinnati, uh, playing in the uh, GCL, the, the South. Uh, you, you, you had the opportunity, as I said, uh, to play, like you said, at Elder and, and now coaching it. Um, we've had several of your, your, your now colleagues uh, in, in the league on the show in the past and talks about uh, you know what it's like. Uh, in, in your words, uh, obviously, first it was as a player, now you're going to go in as a coach. Uh, what is it like to play in one of the best leagues year in and year out in this in this country oh friday night football is unbelievable here in cincinnati and honestly being able to coach against the likes of coach ramsey coach rodenberg and coach speck uh i mean obviously a huge talent obviously coach bull and nicole rain does like the list goes on and on but friday night football here in cincinnati is a huge thing uh it's a, it's an event uh which i'm excited about being a part of it's a, it's a culture here and uh another thing too i want to hit on uh just the staff here, too, at LaSalle has welcomed me with open arms. It made my transition a lot easier here at LaSalle High School, which has been a huge thing for me. And, you know, I know, obviously, they're going to help me a little bit making that transition from college to high school. And, then, you know, getting implemented and, obviously, with the task you have at hand, you know, week in and week out, you better be ready to play football. That's one thing. I mean, every single week, you better be ready to play coach, be able to compete in the GCL. And uh, I think the kids are doing a great job so far, and I think we got a good start. Jim Hilbert talking to us tonight on High School Football America, the new uh, head coach at LaSalle High School. They won the Division II Ohio State Championship first in school history uh, last year. As I said, they finished uh, number 20 in our top 25 algorithm poll, and a lot of other uh, national ranking services uh, had you up there as well. And, and you know, let's let's kind of build on what you said there about the administration and, and how important it is, because I think, you know, in this day and age where, you know, I do a national radio show, it's been five years, uh, you've got the max preps, you've got the rivals, the scout. We can go on and on about the, the, the media spotlight on it, but it doesn't get da- done without the administration. Tell me about the uh, the administration, what you saw that said to you, hey, this is a program on the rise and it's something I want to be a part of. Can you talk a little bit about how important that is? Oh, definitely. I think it starts with administration. You know, guys like Dan Flynn, our athletic director, uh, Tom Luby, our president, uh, guys, you know, guys like Don Ruberg, uh, just, you know, Tom Durger, an assistant coach, is also... They have been a huge, you know, huge thing for me to be able to make that transition here in LaSalle. Uh, Dr. Berger, uh, just a huge supporter from the LaSalle community, uh, welcomed me with open arms. But just administration-wise, uh, Sister Principal Stacy and Dave have both helped me obviously make this transition. Just it's, it's really nice that they're, they're doing whatever they can to help you out uh, with coming into LaSalle, uh, which, is, which is a great, great feeling to have when you come here. Uh, Dad graduated in 64, I think I read. Was he a football player at LaSalle? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. As a matter of fact, he's one of the first classes here at LaSalle in 1964. Oh, wow. So so, so yeah. th- th- that's got to be emotional for you to, to know now you're the coach at his alma mater, I would think. Oh, yeah. He, my dad's all excited and jacked up that I'm at his alma mater. I know he was very, very excited uh, when I took the job. And, and so was my family, my wife, and my twin boys and my little girl. I mean, it's just obviously a little bit different playing on Fridays, which I know they're – they're excited about being part of. I know they're. Uh, I've turned them into football junkies, which is a nice thing. <laughs> so, you know, you know, it's it's a new experience, a new thing. But uh, like I said, I'm I'm very very excited. Excited about what we have in front of us here. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit uh, because you know uh, Thomas Moore College was uh, you had a great run there. Um, again, probably sad to leave there, but uh, give me some of your memories from there and, and and what it means to leave a program like that 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 you did guide for eight years to a pretty high level of success. Yeah, Jeff, that's what I said. The tough thing for me is when I had to tell my players because obviously uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in the program, and you know those guys mean a great deal for me. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we've had a lot of success because they cared about me and I cared about them. Uh, and, and then my coaching staff there, it was tough to leave those guys. Uh, but some of the memories, uh, it's just some of the players I coached uh, from guys like Nick Granke, Zach Andre, Brad Steinmetz, Trevor Stellman, Monty Collier, Kendall Wellens, uh, Jay Volker, guys like that. You know, there's some of the relationships I have over a lifetime. You know, the list goes on. I, one of my former players called me up last night, Aaron Monk, wishing me good luck. But, those are the reasons why you coach. And 
some of the most memorable moments for me is probably our first three championships, uh, especially our first one. When you get that first one uh, and the way we won, it was an unbelievable experience. It kind of got that ball rolling of winning four in a row and then being co-champs the last two years. It's been been an unbelievable, it was an unbelievable run, and it was an unbelievable journey over the last, like I said, eight years at Thomas Moore. Jim Holbert on the line tonight, wrapping up the interview here. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of success with the state championship. Now you come in. Uh, what, how much change is made? And, and maybe the first question I should ask you is, if I gave you the line, Jim Hilbert's team is blank. Uh, what, what's a, a good thumbnail sketch of what a Jim Hilbert coach team is all about? The team that's well-disciplined, plays with passion. It's going to be very, very physical. Uh, it's going to play for four quarters and it takes longer four quarters we're going to get an extra for whatever it takes to get the job done uh a team that's going to have fun uh and like i said uh, along the way i think a team that's going to be a, a family-oriented team guys that are expected to uh count on each other it's always about the guy next team it's about the guy behind you and then you know and also representing the south community in the school you know the right way with classes and walking through the hallways where they to conduct themselves the winning culture work that we have here will go through the football program, school, and how these guys handle themselves. And uh, I think the product of individuals that we'll have by the time they graduate here at LaSalle will get them ready for college. Any major changes? Uh, your offensive uh, system different than what uh, Nate Moore ran? Same thing on the defensive side? A lot of changes well, coming? No, I said that for us. You know, I, you know, what, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, so I'll see some guys on staff that are – coming back on the offensive side of the ball and me being defense and some of the guys that have left, I, I had to bring some guys on the defense side of the ball. Uh, uh, some of my former players, Jay Volker, will be with me, which I'm excited about. And, uh, another guy, Mike Koenig, which I'm excited about. So those type of guys that we're bringing on board with what we have here, uh, with the staff, I've met the offensive guys on staff, great guys. I'm excited about getting a chance to work with them here in 2015. Well, Jim, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I know you're busy uh, ending one relationship and starting another here, but we appreciate your time and we wish you nothing but uh, continued success and good luck with LaSalle this year. Jeff, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for the phone call. Very welcome. That is Jim Hilver, the new head coach at LaSalle High School in Cincinnati. Taking a break, coming back to wrap up High School Football America. You're listening to High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. Those rubber pellets from field turf, be gone. How? With the Debris Inhibitor Razor. It's a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing fields out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and out of the locker rooms. It's favorited by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have time just to tape for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in their house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is made of 70% nylon and 30% spandex material, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor, also known as the TDI Razor, covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable via screen print or embroidery, machine washable, and most important, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is available in black, white, and pink, 12 colors in all, and special colors may also be ordered. Sizes available, youth, that's 4 to 6, the 7 to 9, medium shoe, the large shoe at 10 to 13, and for that extra big foot guy, 14 to 17 is available. This great American-made product was founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III and three partners at Southern Sport. They created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes and allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Go to TDI Razor, spelled R A Z U R dot com, to learn more. And if you use our code HSFBARZR1, you'll get a discount on your order.
Jeff Fisher back on High School Football America. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, congratulations uh, once again to all the student athletes out there signing their letters of intent yesterday on National Letter of Intent Signing Day. Uh, USA Today High School Sports breaking down the uh, top 25 programs uh, as far as how they stacked up and the way they did that in the composite rankings they put together was they took the four major ranking services and uh, then they averaged them out. And Alabama ends up number one as they got uh, number one top choice uh, for uh, 24-7 sports and ESPN, both of them selecting the Crimson Tide number one, Rivals and Scout uh, putting them at number two. So that gives them the uh, average that puts them on top as they nose out USC, the Trojans back with a full class coming off probation. Uh, Rivals and Scout had the Trojans number one respectively, and uh, 24-7 Sports had USC number two, ESPN had them number three, averaged out they finish up number two. So let's go through the top ten for the USA Today High School Sports uh, composite recruiting rankings for the team. So it's Alabama one, USC two, Tennessee three, followed by Florida State, Auburn at number five, Ohio State six, Georgia number seven, Clemson number eight, LSU number nine, and Texas number ten. Go to USA Today HSS.com to learn more. All right, that's going to wrap things up. I want to thank Jim Hilbert uh, from LaSalle High School uh, for joining us, along with uh, earlier in the show, Nate Moore, the new head coach at Maslin Washington High School. Uh, if you missed any of the show, feel free to listen to it in our archives at highschoolfootballamerica.com or on the Artist First radio network at artistfirst.com forward slash Jeff Fisher. .htm. Don't forget to check us out on our social media uh, outlets. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at HSFB America, getting uh, updated throughout the day, all the breaking news. You can get at, uh, at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Uh, on Facebook, uh, that's Facebook.com, High School Football America, with a forward slash in between, the dot .com and High School Football America. And again, you can follow us on Twitter at HSFB America. And don't forget to check out our jobs board. Um, if you're looking for a job, it's the place to go. We have over 200 active listings. If you're a coach out there with an opening, feel free to email me at Jeff at High School Football America.com. We'll post your opening for free to our national audience, our national readership. And uh, if you're an administrator out there and you're looking for a, a head coach, uh, feel free to uh, also email me. It's jeff at highschoolfootballamerica.com. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Thanking Scott Z back in Ohio for keeping the show running smoothly. For now, this is Jeff Fisher saying good night and good sports from sunny Southern California. You've been listening to High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network.